Hello, Keith Frog here at VengeMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm going to be introducing you to a new project that we're going to be starting on in the shop. And yes, I am working on the metal planer that's back behind me. This is still going to be something we're working on, but uh, I'm glutton for punishment. Uh, I, I, one project's not enough. I got to have two things going on simultaneously. Yes, I'm crazy, but this is something I need to get started on. So what is this? First off, this is a collaboration project that I'm doing uh, with some, some guys I met a while back. I'm actually going to be working with the Nashville Steam Preservation Society in Nashville, Tennessee on a project. Uh, the guys up there are actually starting on, I've been actually working on it for about a year now, working on restoring a gigantic full-size mainline steam locomotive uh, that was built back in the 1940s, early 1940s, and ran for about 10 years and sat in a, in a park up in Nashville, Tennessee for the last 60, 70 years, however long it's been. And uh, they've gone and retrieved this locomotive, brought it in, and have started the process of tearing it down and doing a complete restoration on that locomotive to get it back up to operating condition uh, where they can use it on the rails up there around the Nashville, Tennessee area. This right here is actually part of that steam locomotive. This is uh, what you would call an appliance that was on there. It was, uh, it was not the actual uh, had not to do with the actual running of the locomotive directly, but it kind of helped the locomotive run. And what this is, this is a Stoker engine. It's actually a steam engine. Uh, again, it doesn't power the train, but what it powers is an auger that's up in the tender of the locomotive. The tender's where they carry the water and the coal. And uh, that auger actually feeds coal from the tender up into the firebox. Basically, this replaced the, back in the old days uh, the firemen having to be on there with a shovel and shoveling the coal in there. Uh, they could just turn some valves on. It would turn the steam engine on, which rode, in this case, uh, in the tender of the locomotive. Sometimes these were actually on the locomotive themselves. But this, they would turn it on. It would turn that auger on, and it would start augering coal up into the firebox. So uh, this one here is... Uh, uh, I think they've actually got two of these. There was one that was on the locomotive. They've acquired another one. They were, they, again, they were an appliance. You would just go out and get these. Usually the manufacturer of the locomotive didn't make these. It was just something you could order. And most of the railroads used similar appliances from one railroad to the other. But uh, this is one, this is, I think, actually their spare. I don't think this is the one that was in the locomotive. They're going to restore this one, probably put it in the locomotive. Uh, and they asked me to work with them and asked me if I would uh, be so kind as to uh, do this restoration project. I'm excited about it. This is going to be a lot of fun. So um, let me kind of just show you the engine a little bit. Game plan for today is I just want to start getting this thing cleaned up. Uh, we're going to pressure wash it. Uh, we're going to use some degreaser on it, get all the old grime and gunk, and there's literally just stuff down in sediment down the bottom of this thing where it's been sitting for years. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to put it in a vat of evapo rust and let it do its magic on this, and uh, then bring it out. And in future videos, we'll start disassembling it figuring out what all's got to be done and do a complete restoration to get this back up and going. So let's show you what, what we got here. All right, just kind of taking a look down on it. I will say there is a cover that covers all this up. It's just a, a sheet metal cover. I've got the original. We, I'm not sure if I'm going to try to salvage that one or just make a new one. It's got a few issues on it. But uh, this is the the crankcase in there. This is a little bit unusual from a steam engine perspective, if at least for like a stationary steam engine. Uh, we got this twin cylinder. We got two cylinders that's here and here. These, of course, are the piston rods. The pistons are running up here in the cylinders. The heads are off. I've got them, but they're not on here currently. Uh, the piston diameter is seven inches. It's got about an eight inch stroke. And again, there's two of them. And uh, just like on a steam locomotive, they're quartered so that every revolution of this uh, thing, you're getting four power strokes which is kind of cool. Um, this is going to require a lot of work. There's a lot of, lot of rust, a lot of deterioration down here, at least on the steel parts. The cast iron parts are in pretty decent shape, and I think we'll be fine. Uh, my anticipation before even tearing into this, I'm going to probably have to replace pretty much all of the hardware in here, the nuts, the bolts, again, the steel parts because they've rusted so bad. Cast stuff is probably all right. Piston rods, these are going to have to be replaced. They're heavily pitted. Uh, and it's, it's just a piece of steel that goes in there. 
Um, I don't know about bearings yet. I'm just going to have to get in here and see what we got. I'm not even sure what style of bearings this has. It looks like maybe uh, brass or bronze bearings in here from what I can tell. So in operation, un again, unlike most steam engines, uh, this one here actually ran in a, had oil down in the bottom of this, uh, this case in here, very similar to like a gasoline engine. And you have these uh, oil slingers on here. There's two here and there's two on this one. And what happens is, is when this swings around, the oil goes into this uh, little, it scoops it in there, and when it slings it back up, these are just splashing oil all over the inside of this. Again, there's a cover on here to keep the oil contained. And the oil is just going to splash, and there's places in here where the oil gets down into the bearings. And, of course, down here in the bottom, everything's just running. These two pieces here, these are the, the valve rods uh, that, that basically turn the valves on and off in there so that the steam is ported to the correct place in the steam engine. And we should be able to get into all that a little bit deeper when we start taking this thing apart. Uh, it's a pretty interesting engine. There's a, you can't see it from there, but over on this back side here, there's a big square connector coming out of here. And that's what actually connected to the drive shaft that powered the auger that goes up into the locomotive. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get this thing outside. Like I said, I want to pressure wash it, clean it up. There's literally just, you know, all this dirt and trash, dried up oil. Um, it's pretty, pretty nasty. I want to get cleaned up before we do anything else. And I think the pressure washer is going to be the easiest way to do that. So before we get started on this, just real quickly, what I've done is I've come out here and used some degreaser on here. I've just put it on there real nice and thick and just been letting it sit for a little while. I've got the pressure washer with the turbo tip on it. Uh, guys, I know if you watch my channel regularly, you probably know I've got a sandblaster attachment for this pressure washer. I am not using that on this. I'm just pressure washing, that's all we're doing. So let's fire up. Main thing here, get dirt, grease, oil, grime, all that off. That's really what I'm concentrated on. Let's do it. I think we have got this thing pretty well cleaned out. There's a hole or a drain, I guess is a better way of saying it, down in the bottom of this crankcase and I've opened the plug. So I've got everything draining out of the bottom. And I don't know, there's still a bunch of crud in here. I may have to get in here and do some scraping and brushing and try to get up. I want to get as much of that out before I put it in the evapor rust. So I'm going to work on this some more and uh, bring you back when you're ready to dunk it in the evapor rust tank. Well, I think we're ready to get this thing a bath over here in the evapor rust tank. So I've got my, my gantry crane in here. I got a chain sling on here, four point chain sling to pick this up with. We got lifting eyes in the engine itself. And uh, back behind me, I've got my tank of evapo rust, rust remover. I actually built this tank for this job in mind. That was the whole reason behind this. It's been a while. I've had this for a while. Uh, this project here has been kind of on hold for a while because of some logistic issues I had with lifting and just being able to handle this engine. But we are ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start pulling her up here with the gantry crane. that'll clear. Let's uh, go ahead and pull this on back over the tank. I think we're ready to come down now.
right, we're going into the dip now. I can see the water bubbling up through the hole in the bottom down there. underwater now and it looks like it's sitting on the bottom so um, I'll go ahead and pull the chains out this evaporust is safe to handle don't have to worry about uh, it hurting your hands or anything like that See some air bubbling up from down there. All right. All right, we're going to put the lid back on this and uh, let it sit, do its stuff. I'll probably take a peek at this tomorrow. Uh, let it cook overnight and uh, look at it. We may leave it in here for a couple of days, just depending on how bad it is when we pull it back out. So uh, we're just going to let it sit overnight. So we've been soaking overnight with the soaker engine in the evapo rust. So uh, pull her out and see what she looks like. let that water drain out of the center but uh yeah this is uh pretty amazing actually but we still got a little bit of this surface crud on this but it's just uh wiping right off just got a piece of scotch right pad here yeah this is pretty amazing we could have cleaned this thing up. Probably what I'm gonna do is just uh, rub it down and then take it outside and hit it with that pressure washer again. All right, we've drip dried here a few minutes. Let's see if we can uh, get this over the pallet now. Well guys, pressure washing did an amazing job cleaning this thing up. It was almost really kind of amazing out there just watching it wash away all that um, stuff that was just left on here from the rust. In fact, some of it almost looks like it's been sandblasted when actually it hasn't been. So I was real happy with how well the evapo rust worked. Uh, when I got it back in, uh, what I did was we get it, got it up off the pallet. I just used the gantry crane again. We picked it up and you can see now I've got it sitting on a steel stand. Uh, this is a, just a little stand I welded up literally out of some scrap iron, some angle iron and what have you. And what it does is it gets it up, does two things. It gets it up to a level where I can work on it and not be working off the floor, uh, and actually up on some of my workbenches was a little bit too high, so I was able to kind of get it at a nice comfortable level for me to work at. But the second thing it does is I can come in here with a pallet jack now and just go up underneath this little stand that I built and I can move this around the shop very easily. 
on the pallet jack. So uh, let me kind of zoom you in here. I want you to see uh, the, the job that the Vapo Rust did, uh, particularly after we pressure washed it and got it cleaned up. So you're looking down kind of inside the engine now, and uh, again, this stuff in here, it looks almost like it's been sandblasted, but all we did was remove the rust off of it. I will say that uh, after bringing it in here, it has got a little bit of flash rust on it, just from where it was, the raw material was exposed to the weather, and yeah, we got a little bit of flash rust. I squirted it down with some WD-40 just to try to protect it a little bit. But that flash rust will clean right off uh, when we start. We're going to, have to take everything out of here. It's going to get cleaned up again before we actually put it back together. So I'm not too worried about any of that. But man, just look at the job. Amazing. Uh, just by dipping it in there and a lot of our work is, is done for us right here. Now I will comment too that uh, just looking at the stuff that has is pretty badly damaged in here, pretty much any of the steel parts like the nuts, the studs, uh, anything like that, lots of pitting, lots of erosion, lots of uh, material gone away. This nut down here, I mean, it's hardly got anything left on it on the sides. So it looks like pretty much all of the steel parts that are in here, gonna have to pretty well replace it. But most of it's just hardware. That shouldn't be an issue at all. I'm sure there's gonna be some stuff I have to remake uh, once we get in here and start looking at it. Uh, hopefully the castings will be in good shape. And the castings, generally speaking, are in good shape. Not much pitting. Yeah, they were pretty heavily rusted, but they're in the grand scheme of things, I think gonna be salvageable as they are. But steel parts, yeah, we're gonna have to remake those probably and uh, find a bunch of hardware to go back in here. So good news is, is that uh, the guys up at Nashville Steam that I'm gonna be working with on this project, collaborating with, they were able to send me a lot of documentation on this engine. They've got blueprints, they've got manuals, they've got a lot of the specs and stuff in here. So even stuff I do have to remake and even parts that I have to replace, I've actually got documentation I can go back to and really find out exactly what it needs to be, tolerances, those kinds of things. I think I'm gonna be in pretty good shape there. I haven't really delved into that too hard yet. Uh, but I got digital copies, and it's a lot of material that they were able to dig up on this original manufacturer specs and stuff like that. So that's going to be great. That's unusual. I normally don't have that kind of information when I'm doing a restoration. I'm, I'm usually flying by the seat of my pants, but I think on this particular thing here, uh, we're going to have a good bit of documentation to really help that process. So uh, thank you so much, Nashville Steam, for digging that information up for me going to make my job much, much easier, I'm sure. So um, that's pretty much going to be a wrap. I will mention that uh, back in the spring, I had a chance to go up to Nashville, uh, visit the locomotive. They were doing some restoration work, and I shot some video up there. I'm going to just go ahead and edit that as a separate video that you guys can go watch. Uh, probably just put, post them both live today uh, on the same day that I post this video. So uh, uh, I will say there was a little bit of background noise. It was a working set there we were working on. It really wasn't a very controlled place to go and shoot a video, but you can kind of get an idea of the locomotive this is going on and a little bit of its history, uh, which is quite interesting up in Nashville, Tennessee. Really excited to be working with the guys at Nashville Steam on this. This is going to be a fun project and hoping to get back up there a couple of times uh, during their restoration process. This is going to be a multi-year project for them. Uh, they told me this, this restoration on the actual locomotive is going to be several years in the making. So as far as this particular part of that, it gives me a lot of flexibility. This isn't a rush job by any means. It's something I can come in and work on a little bit at a time and uh, get it knocked out. And that's kind of the game plan. This will have, give me something that I can work on uh, kind of simultaneously while I'm working on a few other projects. Guys, that's going to be a wrap on this video. As always, thanks for watching. Please leave comments if you like. Thumbs up are always appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.